With the basics of the I.O. system now under our belt, we're going to tackle something a bit more useful. We're going to focus on brushed base doors. We'll go over fancy ass prop doors in a future episode, however. So first, we're going to make a brush for our door. We'll use this slatted metal material here, which is pretty commonly used for brushed base doors. We'll make it 16 hammer units thick, 128 tall, and 192 long. Now, by default, a brush placed on your map is created as a world brush. This means it can't be interacted with, but it can be used to seal the map from leaks. What we want to do is turn this brush into a brush entity. To turn it into a brush entity, make sure the brush is selected and hit Ctrl T or hit the two entity button on the side here. If you ever accidentally turn a brush you didn't mean to into an entity, you can turn it back to a world brush by hitting two world. When you turn the brush into an entity, it will bring up the familiar object properties window. By default, it will make your brush into a funk detail. What we can do is change it into a funk underscore door. This is the standard sliding door you find in every TF2 map. Rotating doors are also possible, but generally aren't seen in the standard TF2, so we won't bother covering them. So while this brush is already technically a door, it isn't actually set up to do anything just yet. In TF2, doors open based on players getting close to them. This is something the mapper places manually, so it ends up being a combination of brush entities. One being the solid door, and another being an invisible, non-solid volume that sends outputs to the door when a player starts and stops touching it. So, because we want the door to be targeted by an output, we have to give it a name. We'll call it red underscore door, as we'll be making another blue variation by the end of this episode. Now you don't have much of a frame of reference on speed yet, but I can tell you that 100 is really slow for a door in TF2. We don't want players getting caught up on it as they try to run through, so we'll crank it up to 500. Feel free to play with this and experiment a bit on your own. It's important to make sure the delay before reset is set to negative 1, as any other value will cause this door to automatically shut after a set amount of time, regardless of player interaction. This can trap players in the door, or even possibly crush and kill them. Which is funny, but you don't want to do that. By default, if a door is set to move up when opened, it will move exactly the height of the door and no more. However, we want our door to recede into the frame that will eventually be above it, so the lip property is what we want to use for that. This tells the door to either stop a little early or go a little further than the height of when it opens. To make it recede, we want to use a negative value. We'll just do negative two hammer units. Now last, and possibly most important, is move direction. This value sets the direction our door moves when opened. With this drop-down box, we can simply select up and it fills in the numerical values for you. Most TF2 doors open this way. So now that our door has been created, we can create the trigger volume that will be sending our output. Go to the material browser and search for trigger. This material must be used on every face of our brush to act as a trigger volume. We'll go to the top-down view and create a brush around our newly created door. There isn't really a standard for size on this, but extending it a decent way past the door is a good idea. This is another thing you can experiment with on your own. The goal is to make the door open soon enough that a scout can't get caught up on it using a combination of trigger size and door speed. I also try to make sure that the trigger is centered on the door so that it opens at a consistent distance on either side. If you want to create a one-way door, you just make the trigger brush on the side you want the door to open from. Now that we have our trigger brush in place, select it and hit Ctrl-T again to turn it into a brush entity. This time we want to change it to a trigger multiple. This entity turns our trigger volume into something that is invisible in game but can send outputs when a player enters or leaves it, and can do that multiple times. Now as we won't be targeting this entity, we don't need to give it a name. But a possible use for that is having your door start locked by setting the trigger for it to start disabled, and then sending an output to it, telling it to enable, unlocking your door. Going to the Outputs tab, we want to add a new output. The output we want to use is on start touch all. This sends an output when the first player enters a volume. If a second player enters while any other player is still inside, it won't send the output again. If we select on start touch instead, it will send an output every time any player enters the volume. The entity we will be targeting is red underscore door. The input will be open with no delay. Now to set it up to close when the player leaves the volume, we'll create a second output. This time it will be on end touch all. This sends the output when all players leave the volume. It is very important to select on end touch all rather than on end touch, as the door would shut on another player if they were still inside with the ladder. This is actually a really common mistake new and even occasionally seasoned mappers make, so keep it in mind. Again, our output will be targeting red underscore door, this time with a close output and again, no delay. Our door should be in fully working order now, so let's give it a fast compile to try it out. So you can now see that our door moves up when we enter the trigger volume and closes when we leave it. As a scout, I don't collide with it running straight ahead, so it seems like I got the speed of the door and the length of the trigger just right. Entering show triggers underscore toggle into the console, we can see our trigger volume in game. You can see that as soon as you start touching it, the door immediately opens. Now hopping back into Hammer, let's say we want this door to open for only one team, like say, a spawn door. 
first we will need to create a couple new entities. These will be our filters. Create a new entity anywhere on your map and change it to a filter underscore activator underscore TF team. A filter will act as a way of changing how your trigger volume behaves in this example, allowing or disallowing players on each team from causing the trigger to send our outputs. First, we'll change the team property to red and name it filter underscore red. Hit apply and shift drag it to clone the entity next to the first. Change this one to team blue and name it filter underscore blue. Go back to your trigger volume and under the filter name property, set the value to filter underscore red and with another fast compile, you can see that as a blue player, I can no longer open this door. Switching over to red team, the door works again as normal. Going back to Hammer, we can quickly and easily convert our single door into one that is designed for the opposing team only. Select the trigger and then the door inside of it by control left clicking. Shift drag to clone it. Make sure either groups or object is selected, otherwise you'll clone it as world geometry. Now what I'm about to show you is an ancient mystical mapping technique handed down throughout the generations. Something that makes copying these types of things between the teams much easier. While the new door and trigger is still selected, hit control shift R. This brings up the replace menu. Now we want to turn this red door into a blue door, so type in find red and replace it with blue. Make sure it is set to find in selection, otherwise it'll change all instances of the word red in your map. Hit replace all. Not only did this change the name of your door and the filter you used on the trigger, but it even went as far as changing the outputs you set up so they work with your new door. In game, everything should now be working correctly with one door opening for red only and the other for only blue. In the next episode, we are going to use these doors to create our very first spawn room that we can change classes in without dying and show how we keep the opposing team out of it.